Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So today we're going to do some stainless to carbon. So I have some A36 plate here, some stainless here. We're going to show you how to run this using a 309 electrode in the flat position. All right, so I got everything set up. I went ahead and ran a Weiler Tiger Paw, about 40 grit, across the surface of the stainless and then took the mill scale off on the steel. Just going to fit up a regular, regular T-joint, tack it on both ends and throw it in the flat position. So to run this, I'm going to use a 309L Excalibur rod from Lincoln Electric. Big shout out to Lincoln for donating these rods. I got both these plates tacked up, sitting in a little corner, replicating a 1F so or a fillet weld in the flat position. And we're just going to go ahead and start off with the basics. I'm sitting at 110 amps. I've got about 35% arc force on here. I'm just going to go, uh, go through here, do a slow, steady pull, watch it tie in on the sides. Might have to do just a little bit of manipulation, but not much. Also going to be using fume extraction because this is stainless. Always want to be aware of uh, or try to use fume extraction when possible. So I'm going to use about a 25 to 30 degree travel angle. See how that ties right in there? I'm going to favor the stainless side just a little bit more. It always seems like it needs a little bit more of a effort, more attention paid to it than the steel side. It tends to flow pretty good into the steel. Stainless can be a little bit finicky. Just going along the joint, keeping a tight arc gap. Like I said, paying a little bit more attention to that stainless side. Not much manipulation required. It is a drag rod. So we don't have to worry about whipping or pausing or any of that fancy stuff. I'm going to go ahead and stop this when it gets about down to the numbers. Very similar to 308, it'll start burning really fast at the end. All right, so you can see the rod pretty much runs itself. You just gotta tell exactly where to go. Uh, you noticed I favored the, the stainless steel side, which is that bottom plate, a little bit more, just cause it's a little bit more stubborn. Stainless is a tricky metal to weld, but if you uh, focus a little bit more of that heat on there, uh, you shouldn't have any problems. It flows right into that steel, no problem. The slag has a tendency to pop off. So I, I typically use my, or leave my hood on let it cool down, it'll pop off on its own. After about a minute or so, I'll go ahead and, and rake the remaining stuff off, the remaining slag with my chipping hammer. I try not to hit the weld or hit the slag off uh, to the best of my ability. I mean, unless it's you know just stuck on there, just for the fact that I don't want to dent the weld up, uh, put any tooling marks or anything like that in there. So what I'm gonna do now is we're just gonna tie into both of these toes. So I'll put one pass over on the, this side, the bottom side and then I'll put one on that top side and uh, we'll get those to blend in really well. All right, so notice my work angle is favoring that stainless steel side a little bit more. And I'm just gonna go down the toe of that previous weld, the toe where it connects on the stainless steel side. I wanna get 50% coverage, 50% tie into the stainless, 50% tie in into that uh, the previous weld. 50 to 60, because pass number three that I put in from the carbon side should cover up this uh, this pass number two about 50% as well. Get them all lapped together. Notice the rod's doing all the work. I'm just pointing it where I want it to go. Focusing a little bit more on that stainless side. So you see the slag? It's got a tendency to just take itself right off the material. That's why I like this stuff. Less work for me. Like I said, I don't want to sit here and, and beat on that slag or that weld because I don't want to put any tooling marks in the material. Okay, this stuff looks good. I don't want to ding it all up. It's going to run very similar in the horizontal position. It's going to re retain heat for a while, so it's good to let it cool down. Uh, stainless has a tendency to warp when you weld on it or put too much heat into it too fast. So I'm going to go ahead, we'll pause for a couple minutes, we'll let this cool down, and then we'll regroup for that last pass. All right, now my objective with this pass is to tie 50% into the carbon steel plate and lap over the toe of the previous weld. I stay right along the toe 
this rod's pretty much going to do all the work for me. Just got to direct it a little bit and kind of make sure I'm using the appropriate amount of travel speed. but I think we can get her in one rod. Done. Good tie into the stainless, 50% overlap on the beads, and then a good tie into the steel. Uh, that's pretty much what you want to see. Stainless, you got to watch with stainless, it has a much lower thermal conductivity than the steel. So it likes to retain heat a lot more than the steel will. Steel is going to dissipate that heat a little bit more rapid than stainless. Uh, not too much, but I mean, it's, it's a noticeable difference. And you'll notice that this, the stainless has a tendency to warp up a lot more. So. Uh, fixturing is going to be key with this, running one pass, allowing it to cool, you know, watching your inner pass temperature so it doesn't get too hot, giving it ample time to cool. Um, those are just little, you know, things you got to watch for when you're dealing with stainless. That's 309 steel to stainless. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. Until next time, make every well better than your last. Your mother was a hamster and your father reeked of elderberries.